Okay, so what we're going to go over today is making tables using Microsoft Word. And then after that, we're going to move into Excel to do graphs. So to start off to make a table, what you're going to do is you're going to open, off, open up Microsoft Word, which is right down here. As you can see, I already opened it up. Uh, go to the top line and hit the Enter button about three or four times just so you have some space to work with. Now, to get a table in here, I go up to the very top bar, hit Table, go down to Insert, and then Table right here. And this is nice because right here you can just type in um, the number of columns and the number of rows you want. So you can either click or you can type them in. Hit OK, and then you have your table. Another way to do this, you can go up here to New, and then just scroll over what you want. So in this case, we want 2 by 8, and it gives you the same exact thing. So you can get rid of that. We're only working with one. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is once you have your tables, is you have to label your columns. So in this case, we're going to be labeling them time and velocity. So in this first column, just write time. And in parentheses, you're always going to have your units. So write seconds. Hit the tab button to go right over. And then velocity is meters per second. Okay, and now you're just going to fill in the columns with all the numbers that Doc has given you. So. Okay, so once your table is all filled out, what you always want to do is center all the words that you have in the table. So just highlight everything. If you go to Home and then this Center button, it'll center all of them. Um, in this case, we want our graph, or I'm sorry, we want our table to be shaded in the first row. So you're just going to come up here and highlight. Go all the way back up to tables again, and then over here right near shading, you can pull this down and pick any color. So in this case, we're going to pick a nice light blue. It's easy to see. Okay, so now you have your table. All your measurements are centered, and the top row is shaded. Now what we want to do is we want to make this line right here a double line. So you're going to go all the way up here to next to the word draw is this line. You're going to pull it down and you can do all of these. Um, we're going to choose the double bar here. And all you have to do is come down and click on the line that you want to be doubled. Okay, and the last thing you want to do with your table is to get rid of this pencil, just click anywhere else. And the last thing you want to do is label it table 1 or whatever you're going to label it. In this case, it will be table 1. And center it above the table. So go back up to home and center. And there you have it, your table. Okay, so now that you've completed the table in Word, we're going to open up Excel to make a graph. So let's drag it over here so we can see. And the first thing you're going to do is always note that the first column of your table is the independent variable and the second column is the dependent variable. Now the independent variable is always on the x-axis while dependent is on the y. So what we're going to start off doing is you're just going to highlight all of your measurements and then go to Command C to copy. Come over here to Excel, click on the first box, so that's A1, and then do Command V to paste them all in. Now, kind of a neat trick here is if you look over here, it has um, these buttons that will change the amount of decimal places you have. 
So say you need more significant figures, you can just add them, subtract them, and it's really easy. So what we're going to do is to make a graph, you're going to highlight all of your measurements, come up here to charts, open up scatter, and then it's a marked scatter. That's what we're going to do in this case. And if you click click that, it comes right up with your entire graph. Now, what graphs always need are grid lines. And in this case, we have the major horizontal grid lines, and that'll make more sense once I show you what those are. But we want to get all the other grid lines in there, too. So go to Chart Layout, which is right here, and then scroll over to Grid Lines. Now, if you scroll down, it says horizontal grid lines, and we want major and minor. So that's going to give you all those little grid lines. And then same thing, and we just want vertical. So again, major and minor grid lines, and that'll give you all of those. Now, once that you have your grid lines, the next thing you need to worry about is titles. Now, just like your table, your graph also needs to be titled on both the X and the Y axis, and the entire graph needs to be titled. Now, if you come up here to chart title, that gives you an entire title, and we want title above chart. And there, it just comes right up. And then, in this case, you're going to um, write in velocity versus time. Okay, so now that we have the entire graph titled, we need to title our axes. So horizontal, go title below axis. It comes up right there. And we're going to label this time. And just like in the table, we also need to put in units, so write down seconds. And then we're going to do the same thing for the horizontal axis. I mean the vertical axis. And in this one, it's going to be velocity, and then the units is meters per second. Okay, and what's kind of neat about this is that um, if you do hit rotated title, as seen here, it rotates the title so that it's going up and down instead of side to side. It's a bit easier to read and it keeps your graph more condensed. Okay, so now that you have everything titled, the next thing you want to do is get rid of the legend, and the legend is this little thing that says Series 1. Now, this will be good in some cases, but in the majority of the graphs you're going to make in physics, it's not really the best thing. So to get rid of it, you just go over to Legend, and you hit No Legend. And that just gets rid of it, and everything else is scaled correctly. Okay, so, your graph should be looking like this right now, um, with both axes labeled, um, top labeled, and the next thing you're going to do is create a line of best fit. Now, for the line of best fit, you come over to tread line, and then we want a linear tread line. So click on that, and it gives you the line. Now, to get the equation shown on the graph, what you have to do is just double click that line, and this window is going to pop up. So let me drag this over. And what you're going to do is hit options, and then we want to display the equation on the chart, and as you can see, it's shown right here. And we also want to display our squared value. And then once you get that, just hit OK. And then drag this up to a place that's easy to see. I normally just put it at the top right corner. And if your graph, um, the cool thing about Excel is that it automatically scales everything. But if there is something that you do want to scale, on your graph that you don't really like, you just double click the graph, um, come over to properties, okay so if your graph isn't scaled the way you want to, all you have to do is click anywhere on either the x-axis or the y-axis and this window will pop up. Now you just go up to scale, which it should be already clicked on, and then you can type in exactly what you want. So your minimum, your maximum, all of that stuff. 
In this case, I'm going to leave the graph where it is because I like the scaling, but it's just a simple change to type in those numbers. And once you're done, come down and hit OK. And then now you want to click on Chart at the very top of the page, which is over here. And then you want to hit Move Chart. And in this case, we're going to put it on a new sheet, and we're just going to call it Chart 1. And then scroll down and hit OK. And you want it to be on sheet two. And then hit OK. Okay, so sheet two, and it's on its own. And you can just e easily drag it into your Word document. And there it is.